Module 4, Deployment and Pickup Operations. Water transfer operations utilize many pieces of equipment that need to be deployed and picked up. Be aware of the hazards when this aspect of the operation is commencing. Welcome to the Energy Safety Canada video series on surface water transfer operations. This module focuses on deployment and retrieval of equipment used in water transfer operations. Major incidents and life-altering injuries have resulted from work involving deployment and retrieval operations. Planning and Oversight After the line design is completed from the water source to the water destination, the on-site supervisor will determine the spotting locations for spools and pumps. It is good practice to plan and designate roles for the deployment so that each member of the crew knows what they are responsible for and who is responsible for related tasks. Supervisors must ensure that crew members are competent for the tasks they are assigned. Check with your company for the competence assessment and sign-off process. Communications. Communication amongst workers on site needs to be predetermined at the toolbox or safety meeting and tested prior to starting. Be sure that each team member can both send and receive communications during work activity. Cell communication may be unreliable in some areas, so be sure to have a backup plan in case of failure. Road control and public access. Road control is important due to third-party traffic and concurrent work. A plan that details personnel, positioning, line of fire, pylons, signage, flagmen, strobe lights and traffic control devices should be in place when on public or unrestricted roads. All equipment must have flashing beacon lights on public access roadways. When deploying lay flat hose on public or secondary highways, approval may need to be granted by the jurisdiction. Supervisors or managers will generally have the permits if they are required. Spool handling. Spools are transported via truck to the locations and can be unloaded with skid steers, picker trucks, or tractors depending on the equipment available. Spools can weigh in excess of 1,800 pounds and can overload equipment or crush workers. Be mindful of equipment limits and ensure all components are rated for the loads. As an example, check that the forks are rated to the same capacity or higher than the skid steer. Unloading operations involves mounting and dismounting of trailers and equipment. Maintain three points of contact when getting on and off decks of equipment and use ladders or steps where available. Due to the remote nature of deployment, many hazards can be encountered. A few to watch out for are overhead power lines, utility service boxes, third-party traffic, wildlife, and rights of way. Hydraulics, stored energy, when using lifting equipment, hydraulics are typically an integral component. The energy or pressure of hydraulics is quite high and should be respected. Pre-checks are important to identify any leaks or defects addressed. Incident Review In 2015, a worker was injured while operating a skid steer to spool up lay-flat hose with a spooling mechanism, which was built in a small fabrication shop, but not certified by a professional engineer. While reeling the hose, the attachment accelerated and released the steel coupler through the unguarded windshield and seriously injured the worker's right knee. The prognosis is that he has a high risk of post-traumatic arthritis and may never return to a pre-injury level of activity. Engineered Equipment Any equipment used for loading, unloading, spooling, or retracting must be built for purpose and certified for that use. This includes lifting devices, tag lines, and spoolers. Physical walkthrough or projected path. A walkthrough is undertaken to identify all hazards in the vicinity of the hose path that might not have been visible or noticed in the planning stage. Look for anything that may interfere with the line path or spooling operations, like buried objects, obstructions, utility boxes, or crossings. Lay flat hose must sometimes run through culverts and be positioned by hand. This is a physically intensive operation and the risks need to be evaluated. Strains, slips, trips and falls and overexertion injuries are associated with this task. Be sure to warm up and plan for this activity. The hose itself will need to be protected from the sharp edges of the culvert. Sometimes old pieces of hose are used as a barrier, but ask your supervisor what the preference is with your operation. Road crossings. 
Road crossings are used to allow the line to cross a road without impeding traffic. These devices are robust but require adequate signage for early warnings to drivers. Hitting one unexpectedly is like hitting a very large speed bump. Hand signals and vehicle movement. Personnel assigned to guiding vehicles should use a standard set of directional signals for guiding vehicles at work sites. Standard directional signals across the industry improve communication between drivers and guides. Energy Safety Canada has a resource for this, the Worker's Guide for Hand Signals for Directing Vehicles. Rotating Equipment. Rotating equipment is present in various forms. In addition to the deployment and retraction of equipment, power takeoffs, skid steer spooling attachments, and pull type hose reels are commonly found in industry. Be sure you can identify the go and no-go zones and respect the shields, barriers, and guards. Line of fire, skid steers. When skid steers are operating on site, good communication and awareness from the operator and surrounding personnel are critical to avoiding an incident. Never approach the skid steer without direct eye contact and acknowledgement from the operator. Do not assume you can be heard. Operations can be quite loud and confirmation is needed to reduce the incident risk. Deploying and picking up equipment may sound like a simple task, but if you're not paying attention and there's not a plan in place that you know about, make sure you ask your supervisor for more information.